Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 21st, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. An old saying in the Unix world is that if you have a problem and you're trying to solve it with a regular expression, well, you end up with two problems. Regular expressions are very handy if you're trying to validate complex patterns, but that comes at a cost. Regular expressions are also very complex to analyze. This often leads to a regular expression denial of service or redos vulnerabilities. In a recent paper published last week at Usenix, some German researchers took a look at this problem for Node.js modules. As part of their work, they found 25 popular vulnerable Node.js modules. Again, this is just a denial of service attack, but a simple request may keep your server busy for at least several seconds, in some cases longer. As part of the paper, they published a couple of direct expressions that they found to be vulnerable. Not all of them are terribly complex. One, for example, just looks for spaces followed by a comma followed by spaces. So sometimes it may be possible to use something else than a regular expression. And that's really your first solution here. Whenever you use a regular expression, think if you can accomplish the same thing without it. For example, by checking if certain characters are just present or to see if a string, for example, is numeric or not. And usually you have some CLIP functions that can accomplish that much more efficiently. Another way to mitigate this problem somewhat is just to limit the overall size of the string. So limiting it to something reasonable can also help with this vulnerability or at least limit the impact of it. And then we got a couple more details about the SSH username enumeration. Did he wrote up uh, some of the things that we know about it so far? He has played with it uh, quite a bit. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that there are no real good, great IDS, like snort signatures for it right now. Well, it uh, turns out that the actual attack happens after the encrypted tunnel was established. So it's encrypted and uh, it's really hard to sort of, you know, get a good handle on what to look for. Now, the actual exploit that everybody's using at this point, this little Python script, yes, it has sort of a fixed length of its messages that you could use. And they also included a link to a PCAP file here that you can use to play with it yourself. But it's not really all that hard to modify the exploit a little bit to create different length messages. So you can't really just look for the length of the message itself. Now, one problem I talked about last week when I first mentioned this vulnerability was that the OpenSH server doesn't log the IP address of the attacker. It just logs the fact that the attack happened. Well, by increasing the verbosity, you could actually log the IP address. Just be careful that you then don't trigger a denial of service with too many logs. But many SSH servers aren't really all that busy, so increasing the log verbosity shouldn't really be a huge problem. Over the last years, Microsoft has consistently improved the security of Windows by implementing various exploit mitigation techniques that make it more difficult to write reliable working exploits. At B-Sides Las Vegas now, researchers demonstrated a new technique that will bypass everything that has been done with Windows 10 so far. They're calling their trick turning page tables. And what it's really about is, well, uh, manipulating the page tables that map memory in the kernel. So what you need is one of these very ubiquitous memory corruption vulnerabilities, for example, it allows you to read and write memory. But then you're using this vulnerability to target these page tables and swap them around to execute code that's already in memory. Interesting trick. And of course, in order to take advantage of it, you first need a vulnerability. So this is not really sort of a vulnerability in itself, but really something that allows you to take advantage of other vulnerabilities that you may find. 
A video of a successful use of this technique is shown in the slides to which I will link in the show notes. And of course, these slides contain a lot more details than I can cover here in these couple minutes. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.